thing about this is we've actually been doing this year round. Um, and we thought it smart instead of waiting till November or December to pack all these boxes, why not gather supplies and then have a big uh, packing party? So for the month of September, if you're out and about and you're shopping, uh, if you would pick up a few of those extra items listed at the bottom, uh, there are some tubs back there and you can put them in those tubs uh, and shoe boxes. The best place to get shoe boxes, if you go to Hobby Lobby, uh, they, have the, they have their sh Operation Christmas Child display um, and they have plastic totes with the lids. The cool thing about these plastic totes is when we send these boxes to places, we're not sending them to Missouri, we're not sending them to Nebraska, we're sending them halfway across the world where they don't have boxes to store things, or they don't have plates, or they don't have bowls, or they don't have... And so these plastic tubs not only serve the purpose as being a shoebox and a Christmas present to open, but it also serves as maybe a bowl or a plate or a storage thing for other things throughout the year. Um, so that's the best place uh, to go buy shoeboxes, if you wanted to know. And they're relatively inexpensive. Um, there, where'd he go? There he is. Am I supposed to announce that? Um, this fancy guitar, I'm going to hold it up. Uh, if you don't know, James uh, is going to be leaving us. <laughs> that is exactly what you want to hear. <laughs> that is exactly what, you don't want to hear the, yeah! Um, but he is actually going to go back home. And so to send him off, uh, we have this guitar, and we would like you guys to come by and sign it um, anywhere on here. Uh, some of us have signed it. Some of us have put some scripture. Uh, I like Ian's. Ian's has got to be the best. It just says Ian Long. <laughs> um, but today after the service, if you're not, if, if, while you're fellowshipping, if you'll come up here and sign this, that would be great. That way he has it. Uh, to use down there and to remember us by. Um, the last announcement I have um, is regarding the youth pastor position. Um, starting next Sunday, we are going to have a gentleman come in for two weeks. He's going to be here a Sunday, a Wednesday, a Sunday, and a Wednesday. Um, we, he's talked with, he's interviewed with me and Doyle. He's interviewed with the leadership. Um, he's been praying about it. We've been praying about it. He feels called to this position and called to this church. Um, so we kind of offered him a, hey, on a trial basis for a two-week period, come get your feet wet, come see how the church works, come kind of get involved uh, and do the job. And then um, after that, uh, we're going to have a meet and greet slash question and answer period uh, on October 9th. Um, it's a Sunday evening. We're going to do it Sunday evening. And then instead of having a special called business meeting because it runs right into our business meeting, uh, October 12th, uh, he, will, his, he will be on there as part of the agenda items to vote on to be the youth pastor. Um, so with that information, continue to be praying for him, continue to be praying about that position and the direction for our church. Uh, with that, I'll have everybody stand up. And this side gets to greet that side, and that side gets to greet that side. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it would be... 
Stacy. Where, where'd Stacy go? Okay. Because she may wait a little while to go. They told us, Joy told us last week that Stacy would be down there during worship time she said with the kids. He 
rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. You can go ahead and be seated. And the kids that are doing the children's program can leave, be dismissed. That's a lot of kids. <laughs> You can hang up here with us. Hebrews 4.15 says, for we, not, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Um, we're not going to talk about sin. Well, we kind of are. Uh, but this is the opportunity where we can uh, voice praises about what's going on in your life. It's good for other believers to hear uh, praises about what's going on. So... Does anybody have any praises? I've got one back here. Apparently there's two. Okay. Um, probably Friday, it was either Thursday or Friday night, I walked out in the garage and there was water everywhere. Or it was coming out and I thought, oh my gosh. Because our water heater, we moved in the house in 1995 and we've never changed the water heater. So I thought, it's finally going out. I opened the door. There was water under the water heater. I know some plumbers. Yeah, so I thought, oh, my gosh, because I'm about as mechanically inclined as nobody. So I'm thinking, oh, great. You know, this is going to be a heck of a job. And the people that owned the house prior to us, when they installed that hot water heater, they, after that, had, in, had put a new furnace in, and the new furnace was big, to where it couldn't come out the door if there wasn't enough room. So I took it upon myself to do a demolition job. And I thought, well, this isn't too hard. I can, I can do a demolition job. So I tore out a section of wall, and it actually went pretty good. So I was pretty proud of that. But then we called Diane's little brother, because he is like Chad. Chad can do anything. Well, Jason can do anything. And bless his heart, he came out. I met him at Menards. We bought a new water tank. He hauled it out there. And I spent the day with him, you know, being able to talk. He's a solid Christian. And he had that done. I mean, it was just, you know, I love watching a master at his trade. I mean, I measure twice and still count it wrong. He can measure approximately and get it straight every time. And just to have him come out and do all that. And then Diane says, well, here, I'm going to send home some homemade salsa and some homemade cucumbers. She's been doing all kinds of candy. And then she snuck some money in the box <laughs> because we wanted to pay him for his time. And he climbed in the cab of his truck and pretty soon he comes out and he says, all right. He says, I can take this other stuff, but I'm not taking this. And we tried our best to get him to take that, even to bless his kids. And he says, nope, that's not, you know, this is my ministry. And I mean, it was unbelievable. And why just appreciate uh, family and, and fellow Christians. Amen. I can't top that story. But uh, today I get to celebrate somebody's very special birthday. My, my beautiful wife. It's her birthday. She's 29 again. So I learned. Happy birthday. Uh, God bless me with her. Uh, it's been 16 and a half years ago. Well, 17 total since we've got to know each other. But uh, she's been a real blessing in my life, and I don't think I'd be here today if it wasn't for her. Amen. And I want to add something to that. It was 103 when we brought her over in the hospital. <laughs> 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 All right. We'll just let you guys pass it around. Okay, I got an experience in the last couple of days I've never had in my life, and I don't know all, I, I could talk all day on it, but I won't. I was able to go to the wonderful weekend for women. I got it right! And it was the first time for me, and I, I wanted to go for 100 years, and I'm only 39, so that's not easy. 
Um, I got to sleep on bunk beds, which was such a thrill. And <laughs> I got to wake, wake up everybody in the, the dorm room. We had six. I don't know how many we had. We had five to begin with, and I think seven as we went along. And I got to wake up everybody screaming in my sleep each morning. What we could only describe as tongues of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Randy said it. I was somebody was speaking in tongues. There was nobody there to <laughs> interpret, so I was like, God, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I've promised them all that if they have a hard time waking up in the morning, I will be calling them just shortly before 6 from now on. Um, they said there was over 440-some women there. Um, and for all the young ladies that are listening that are here, or if you have younger sisters or cousins or nieces or whoever that comes in and out of your life, that thinks they got to look like who's in the magazines and they have to be all slim and be able to wear all these fancy clothes and do all of these silly things. I can guarantee you out of 440 some women that walked in and out of those buildings and there was a lot of walking, there wasn't one model in the bunch. And so if you could just share that with the little girls in this world that it's so silly to try and, and live up to those expectations that somebody decided would sell clothes and sell makeup. You know, it's just such a, such a waste of energy and thinking uh, for these little girls to think they've got to live like that. They just need to love themselves and love each other and be who they are and just be grateful that they have their life and they have all these opportunities that we have here and I didn't know I was going to say all this but um, yeah that would be my my wish for all of them we had uh, a singer come in from Nashville and she rocked the place and Nellie Ellie Holcomb she had a drummer that uh, had trouble sitting in her seat to drum. She wanted to get up and move around. And uh, another guitar player that was singing along, and, and it was just really nice. And a lot of good singing and a lot of uh, touching your emotions and reaching into your heart and making you do some thinking. Uh, I got a lot closer to some of the women here in church, and I made me a new friend over here is Randy's mama, uh, grandma. And so we're going to be pen pals now. And we decided that this morning. And so I'm really tickled about that because I made a lot of cards and I want to use them, okay? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many I'm going to get used before I kick the bucket, but, you know, I really want to use some of them. So anyway, uh, Grancy, couldn't, Grancy couldn't go. She was going to go and she wasn't able to go. And so she gave her spot to me and, and I didn't know what a blessing it was going to be, but I'm very grateful. So, Just behind you. The short one. Hi. Um, I have two blessings. One is I'm back home. Yay. Thank God. We started, my family and I started here back in 1996. So I've been here off and on through the years, and my children grew up in this church. Speaking of children, this month is Suicide Prevention Month. Um, I lost my daughter to suicide in January 2nd, 2015. By the grace of God, I have been able to help people to save their lives. I've been saving my life <laughs> through that. And um, I'm just grateful for all the love and support that I got from everybody here that has seen my children grow up and has uh, seen me grow up as a Christian. So praise God. And if anybody knows anyone who is having any difficulty, please, please let me know. All right. Thank you. This is real short, but uh, on Friday night, my air conditioner decided to spill out water all over the floor. Kind <laughs> of like what happened, but I called the next day and fortunately they what he did was he took out the air, air conditioned part from another uh, apartment that was empty and gave it to me and it's quieter 
because our air conditioners and heaters are one unit. They are really loud, really loud. But I was blessed to the fact that this one's quieter than any one I've had. I forgot to tell you all. Um, I'm a talker. I, I, I just am. Um, Paula kept my dog for me for two days, and she loves my little dog. And then I got yesterday, I uh, texted her a message and said, we'll be home about 5 o'clock. And then I got one back. It says, now I know why you're so tired. <laughs> and then another friend kept my birdies. And for those of you that are in love with your pets, you know why it was so hard for me to leave them. My little doggy, I'd never left in seven years that I've had him. I was so glad to see my babies. But I didn't talk about it the whole time. Praise boss and me. <laughs> no, I just want to say what a wonderful time we did have at Wonderful Weekend for Women. The speakers were phenomenal. We had lots of learning and uh, learned about people. And also, and to top off Carol, those, all those, you can't believe how many young women were there. I mean, us old girls were the, the minority. And, and what, a, what a blessing it is to God to know that these young people are coming along and believing in God. I had something else to say, but I can't remember. Tomorrow's Ray's birthday. Is that what you forgot? Or? Talk like a pirate. Hey, okay. hey Pastor, Pastor, Jace, Pastor Jeremy, does yeah. WWW stand for... Wild weekend for women? Yeah. No. We don't tell. No. I'll go ahead and try to keep this short. Don't know that I can do that. Um, I did not get to go to WWW this weekend, um, but I was amazingly blessed just the same. I didn't get to go because yesterday was my sister's 25th wedding anniversary. Um, and so my brother in law has been planning for the last couple of years to redeem um, the wedding that my sister never got to have. Um, my sister was, you know, they, they were young. My sister was two months pregnant. They decided that they needed to get married. They got married in a very small chapel. No fru, no to-do, no like 15 people, small chapel. Um, they, they hadn't received Christ at that time. But they've been together for 25 years. Um, and he put on a surprise wedding for her. Um, so over the past couple of years, especially this last year, um, they've been planning, orchestrating, and um, no greater love has any man ever displayed for his wife. Believe me, gentlemen, he has raised the bar Hi. He took her out yesterday morning to the lake to the gazebo and got down on one knee and asked him to marry him again. Um, then he said, we need to go to the house of David by our friend Denny and we have an appointment there. And they went to David's bridal and he bought her a wedding gown because she did not have a wedding dress at their wedding. And the family, um, my parents and everybody met them there and they were able to see her come out in, in the wedding gown that she chose or that he had picked out for her, I don't remember which. And then they went out for breakfast and they had the wedding that she never got to have. Um, and then he sang to her. Um, he never sings, he, he sang to her. It was such an amazing display of his love for her and how he loves her the way that Christ loves the church. And I could not have been more blessed. I could not have been more thrilled that my daughter was there to be able to see and witness that with me, to be able to truly witness what it means to be joined in the union of God and married and 
it was absolutely simply amazing and I know you ladies were really really blessed by WWW but God was working on me while I was here so So, as most of you know, well, all of you know, I'm going to K-State, um, and one of my biggest fears was not being able to find a church out there, not being able to have any support system whatsoever, and I just want to say how amazing K-State is that they allow, um, there's a rough group, which is Reformed University Fellowship. Um, every Tuesday night, we meet in one of their lecture halls. They allow us to do that. We meet there. Um, we study the Bible. They have small groups for that on, like, Monday nights. And then Thursday nights, they have Christian Challenge. They have small groups for Christian Challenge in the dorms. Um, K-State's really supportive of that, and it's just nice to have that support system. Um, I get texts almost every day about, like, we have a group me. That's a college thing, apparently. I didn't know that. But group me is, like, this little group messaging app that you can have. Anyway... <coughs> And we have a group me for that, and every day it's like, well, I read this in my Bible, and then that will just spark a conversation. So actually, um, at college, I have been more involved in church groups than I have actually in high school at all. And that's all thanks to K-State, I think, <laughs> honestly. Would you have something else? I don't need now that. that you know. <laughs> I don't know if, if everybody that was at Wonderful Weekend for Women knew this, but the main speaker talking about her son was T Mac's daughter. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> I don't think people know Terry McIlvain as T-Mac, so. Um, any other praises from up here? I have one. Of course. My, uh, <laughs> my wife is downstairs in the nursery, sir. So be turn around and wave. Hey, Vonda. Hey, oh, Hopefully they're watching TV, but this Friday we celebrated our 38th wedding anniversary yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. That's a blessing. I thought she'd leave after two or three years, so this is this amazing to me. So uh, it's good to hear Stacy's story about marriage. Marriage is a blessing. It is ordained of God, and I am just grateful for the woman that he's given me for these years. Amen. Let's pray. And her brother. Father God, we thank you so much for this time where we can voice praises. We can voice uh, what God's doing in our life. God, I pray that that would be a blessing to you. I pray that that would be an encouragement to other people in the room. God, we ask that you be with Doyle and the worship team as they lead us into your throne room. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, of God, I'm born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Perfect delight Visions of rapture Now first on my side Angels descending Ring from above Echoes of mercy Whispers of love This is my story Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. is my daily bread, your very word, spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for train of your robe fills the temple. You are perfect, the galaxy maker, the star breather. All creation was made by you. God, it is such an honor to even think that you would have a second thought about us, nonetheless that you would come and die for us. What an honor, God. What a magnificent Savior we have that literally has snatched us from the fires of hell. God, I just pray that you will motivate us for the divine appointments that you set in front of us every day to speak up on your behalf, to say, you know what, God loves you and so do I. Give us that bold. Jesus' name. Amen. So my weekend, uh, you could probably say it was a wonderful weekend for girls at my house. Um, I work at Topeka High, and we have over 1,800 students, um, plus the two or 300 adults, so we're a small town. Um, and I'm tired after those days. Uh, my goodness. I watched... Uh, three little ones on Friday because Emma got to go to school um, and man uh, at 1.15 actually we went to bed a little bit earlier 1.10 um, <laughs> nap time no surprisingly I'm not the one who took a nap uh, I got to hang out with my dad this weekend um, so my dad took a nap uh, Lucas took a nap, Owen took a nap, and Lily took a nap. Um, so I watched 
the Andy Griffin show and did my Bible study and relaxed. Yeah, on Friday. I think I texted her Friday morning when she was getting home. Um, Because Friday morning, it went downhill real fast at breakfast time. We have more fun when mom's around. So, uh, yeah, it was a burn on dad. But we survived. Nobody died. Um, All of them were still alive when mom showed up. Um, So that was my weekend. Uh, We had a good time. Uh, Everyone was sick, though. Emma's sick. My dad was sick. I got over being sick, so maybe that was why we were all humdrum. But we're going to pray, and then we're going to dive right into this. Father God, we thank you so much that you can, that you're in this place right now. God, I pray that you would move. I pray that you would speak through me, God. I pray that you would uh, empty me of myself, that it would be your words and your thoughts, Lord. We ask that you move in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, last week we talked about three questions, and we talked about a topic uh, called obedience. Um, And this weekend at my house, obedience was the topic for the girls, and they were not. And so we had a lot of discussion about being obedient and listening. Um, Ray's shaking his head. (laughs) I know, it seems that's what my kids do. I don't know if they have hearing aids or what, but for some reason I can go, Emma, 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 and what? (laughs) So, uh, but obedience was the topic of discussion because they were not, and I was expecting it. Uh, And so we had a lot of discussion about listening and being obedient and doing what you're told and not hitting people or not screaming at people and... Oh my. The list could go on and on and on, but last week we talked about three specific questions. Can anyone tell me the first question? Burn. The first question was, why are we not obedient to God? Can anybody tell me the second question? Jay's leaving already. (laughs) The second question is, What does it cost us? And can anyone tell me the third question? Are you willing to make the adjustments necessary? The first question is, why are we not obedient? And if we open the Bible, we understand that we are a selfish, sinful people. You're bad, I'm bad. Sin separates us from Christ. Sin acts as a barrier between us and God. And so when we start to ask this question, why are we not obedient, the first we need to ask is what sin is in our life that's keeping us from Christ? And then that second question was, what does it cost us? And we understand the upfront cost of, of being obedient and following Christ is your life. Plainly put, there's no way around it. It costs you your life. After that, after that initial salvation, if we begin to weigh them out, it really costs us nothing. And in fact, we miss out on those blessings that were intended for us. In our Bible study, we often ask, well, what blessing had we missed out on if we'd have let God be in charge? And that question rings true if we're, if we're obedient to Christ and we've removed that sin from our life and now we're to the cost. What does it cost me to be obedient? It costs me nothing. And in fact, when I'm disobedient to Christ, I miss out and I lose things. And then that last question is, are you willing to make the adjustments? Knowing that we're to be obedient, knowing as a believer in Christ that I am to do what God has called me to do, the question is put to us, are you willing to make those adjustments? Are you willing to make the different adjustments that's required to do what God has called you to do? There are many different types of adjustments. Some of those are job. Sometimes it's required that we quit our job, find a different job, don't take a promotion at this job, take the promotion at that job. Then we go on to home, and sometimes it's required that we downsize our home, sell our home, 
move to a different home, move to a different state, a different country. Then we get to our friends and maybe we need to get rid of some of our friends. Yeah, no one likes that. Maybe we need to get rid of... Maybe, though, instead of getting rid of our friends, maybe we need to be that person, we need to be Christ to them. Maybe instead of getting rid of them, maybe we're to be Christ to them. Maybe we're to be bold in front of our friends. Maybe we're to say things that would offend our friends in Christ's name. And then we get to our family and, ouch, maybe we need to stop talking to some of our family because they're downers, because they drag us down, because they continue to drudge up things. Maybe we need to be Christ to our family. Maybe in our family we need to be saying difficult things to those difficult family members to call them out, to love them in those difficult times. And then we can make adjustments in the commitments. Maybe we need to say no to things. And I wish Eric was here to hear that. Maybe, as believers in Christ, we need to tell people, I can't do that. For my health, for the health of my family, I can't do that. And then, we're going to scratch ministry. Maybe some of us need to step up. Maybe we need to make necessary adjustments in our life, make time in our life to step into those ministry positions. Or maybe we need to say, hey, I've got too much going on. I cannot do that. It's okay. God's big enough. If you can't do it, God will find someone else. I promise you that. But if God's called you to that, then you better make adjustments. You'd better make adjustments to follow that calling. And so we can go on and on and I can give you guys the microphone and you can list all the different adjustments that you've had to make. Uh, We had to, when we lived in Kansas City, we had to get up at 5 o'clock. We had to get Emma ready to go and we were out the door 5.45, I think, 6 o'clock for the hour drive. Uh, And we had to make sure that we had enough clothes for the day. We actually had to have enough food for the day. We had to have enough diapers for the day. And so those are the different types of adjustments that sometimes we have to make. You guys could list all the different adjustments. I can go on and on and on. But that last question we talked about last week, are we willing to make those adjustments? Are we willing to go, yep, I'm willing to make those adjustments? That's where we're at. That's where we're going to camp out for the next uh, few minutes, and that's what we're going to talk about. If we're going to be obedient, then adjustments are required. Understand that we cannot stay where we are and follow God. You can't stay where you are knowing there's sin between you and God and attempt to follow God. It doesn't work like that. You can't remain in sin and follow Jesus. You can't serve both the world and Christ. It doesn't work. You can't... We can't remain where we're at. We can't stay where we're at and continue to receive the blessing that God would have us if He's called us halfway across the world. We can't stay here in Topeka, Kansas and receive a blessing halfway across the world if God's called us there. It doesn't work like that. Now, we understand, and we try to do this in our own lives. We try to go, oh, but with technology and all this fancy stuff, I can reach the world for Christ. You're right. Yes, you can. But nothing ring, nothing has more of an impact than feet on the ground. I've, I've talked with missionaries, and I've worked with missionaries, and I've gone on mission trips, and I, we can send money till we're bankrupt to those missionaries. And they like that, and they use it, and they need it. But nothing has more of an impact than when I show up with my two feet and say, what can I do to bless you? I can't do that here in Topeka, Kansas. I can't stay in Topeka, Kansas, go halfway across the world and bless some missionary. It doesn't work like that. So we cannot stay where we are 
and follow God. There are two adjustments, though, that are almost always required when we make big adjustments. Now, we can go down the list with jobs and family and houses and homes and friends and commitments and ministry. We can list all those out, but there are, almost, there are two that are almost always required. The first one is your belief. Plainly put, it's what you believe about God. You see, what you believe about God begins to grow as you grow. You see, when we're put in those difficult positions and our faith is tested and our faith is stretched, then we begin to grow and, and our knowledge of Christ begins to grow and our relationship with Christ begins to grow. And sometimes what we believe about God begins to grow. You see, I was in seminary, and uh, my theology professor, I actually took Theology 1, Theology 2, and then I took another class from him because I liked him so much. <clears throat> but the theology classes, he would explain different topics. And he explained one topic that I understood and I knew, but I didn't under fully understand until he began to explain it to me. And he, it was about it not being about me. And it blew my mind. And then God began to do things in my life and began to call me to certain to an expectation and to call me out of sin. And, and I remember I came to a point in my life where I was either going to be done or we were going to take a step of faith. And we began to make adjustments in our life. Randy and I began to make adjustments to move to take that step of faith. And my belief in God grew. What I believed about God grew. <clears throat> if you open up your Bibles to John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Your belief change. Your belief in God changes. And the question about that verse is, do you really believe that to be true? And if we really believe that verse to be true, what are we doing about it? What are we doing about that verse? And as, as we grow in our faith and as we grow in our walk with Christ, we, become, we come to this verse and we understand that there is absolute no other way to come to Jesus or to come to the Father except through Jesus. And we understand that and we begin to grow in that. And we begin to, to know that and we begin to live like it. The second verse is Matthew 11. 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 it says, Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we come to Christ, we're to empty all of our junk on Him. We're to take up His burden and lay our burden down. The issue, though, is do we really believe that? Do we honestly believe that Jesus will give me rest? And if, we, if you can be honest with yourself for the next few minutes and answer that question, do you really believe that about God? You see, God is either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. He can't be one, he can't be one and something else. He can only be one, so He's either a complete liar, and we're here for nothing. He's crazy, and again, we're here for nothing. Or... 
He is the absolute Lord of the universe, the creator of dirt, and our Savior, and we're here for a reason. And if you believe that verse, if you believe Matthew 11, then you're saying, yes, God, I know that you will give me rest. I know I can take my worries to you. I know I can take my burdens to you. And if you're honest with yourself and you go, do I really believe it? And if your answer is yes, then let me ask you this. What does your life reflect? Hmm. You see, if my life reflected I trusted God, I wouldn't worry. If my life reflected I would give my burdens to Christ, then I would be burden-free. If my life reflected what I believe that to be true, then I find rest in Christ. So that first adjustment that usually is the tough adjustment is what we believe about God. You see, I got saved at the age of seven, and then uh, when I was 17, I felt God call me into the ministry, and I was like, mm, I don't know God, I don't know God, and uh, I went in it kind of feet first, and it's been a roller coaster ride ever since. I have learned that the God of the universe, the God that created dirt, loves Jeremy. He doesn't love me because I'm part of a body. He doesn't love me because I'm part of the world. He loves Jeremy. He died on the cross for Jeremy. I'm learning some of this stuff is actually true. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You should read it. I'm learning that I can go to Christ and put my burdens at the foot of the cross. And I stand up and I find rest. And that first adjustment is what we believe about God. Are we willing to say, yes, God, I believe this to be true about you? Does my life reflect what I believe about God? The next one, the next adjustment that has to be made is probably even tougher than that one. You see, that's more of the theology question and that's the uh, Randy would hate when I was in seminary. We would have these deep, or I would have these deep theological qu conversations at 11 p.m. right when she's getting ready to go to bed and I'm wide awake because I got done reading my theology book and I want to talk to her about it. And she says, Jeremy, go to bed. And then uh, she may have thrown a book or two or, or just <laughs> shooed me out of the bed altogether. But this next one is your action. The first one was the theological and the mindset and putting a heart after God. And this one is putting my two feet after God. You could answer that first question, and, and do you believe this about Christ? And most of us would go, yes, I believe that about Christ, because it's in Scripture and I believe the Bible to be true. That second question, though, does your life reflect it, is the tough one. Does your life reflect what you believe about God? And we can fake these different adjustments. I can fake and I can, I can tell you I know a lot about the Scripture and I can tell you I know a lot about the Bible, but when it comes to not faking it, my feet can't fake it. I can stand up here and tell you that I don't worry and that I have complete trust in God, but that would be a lie. And my wife would probably stand up and call me out on it. I struggle with trusting God. I struggle with worrying about God. And my life reflect, reflects it. I have gray hair. I don't sleep all that good sometimes. Does our life reflect it? You see, our actions are an indicator of what we believe, and what we believe eventually trickles down to our actions. If you open up to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. 
says, But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you, rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have heard and seen. Now this is an excerpt, and and I would encourage you to read the whole chapter, because the whole chapter says, These guys were thrown into prison, they were taken out back behind the jail and beaten to make them be quiet. Because they didn't have a charge to bring in front of the court, so they took it upon themselves to take them out back, beat them, and then drag them in front of the court and say, you don't do that again. And Peter and John stood up and said, hey, we're not going to stand here and say, if it's right to listen to you or not, know this, we cannot stop talking about what we've seen and experienced. If we want to be like Peter and John and we, want to, and we want to be at that place where we cannot stop talking about the God of the universe, the God who created dirt, the God who loves me, then we have to begin to experience Him. We have to spend time in His Word. We have to read His Bible. We have to spend time praying to Him. Their actions indicated what they believed. You said they believed that Jesus rose from the grave. They believed that it wasn't just somebody who rolled the rock away and moved the body. They believed that it was Jesus standing in the upper room saying, Hey, look at my hands. Hey, look at my side. They believed that it was Jesus when He said, Hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'll be back. They believed it so much that they were willing to be beaten for it. They were willing to stand in front of the court and say, you do what you want to me, but I cannot, I physically cannot stop talking about it. You see, their actions dictated what they believed. The next verse is Acts chapter 9. Starting in verse 19, we'll read through 22. And he took food and was strengthened. Now for several days he was with the disciples who were in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All those hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, Is this not he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name? And who had come here for the purpose bringing them bound before the chief priests. But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. Wow. Paul's actions dictated what he believed. And we could, fa- we could rewind and go that on the road to Damascus, he saw Christ. He saw Jesus. And then he spent some time in fellowship with another disciple. And then he spent some other time with more disciples. And he began to grow and he began to learn his belief in Christ was wrong. And he began to change what he believed about Christ. He began to believe what Jesus said is truth. And his actions followed. Much like Peter and John, he was a guy you probably couldn't shut up. We don't say shut up, though. He was the guy you couldn't keep quiet. He was the guy who was going to say those difficult things that needed to be said. He was the guy who would call people out on difficult things. You see, Peter, Jan- Peter and John and Paul, their actions indicated what they believed. They made adjustments on their belief in Christ. They believed Christ to be truth. They believed what he said to be truth. And their actions indicated that. Much like you guys, we could all sit here and we could say, yeah, I believe believe the Bible to be true. Yeah. But if we're honest with ourselves, do our actions indicate that? For some time, mine didn't. I knew enough of the Bible through all through high school to keep people at bay. 
to, just to be dangerous with it so they wouldn't ask any moving or deep questions. I'm going to ask Doyle to come up and he's going to play something. And the invitation is extremely simple today. The invitation is, would you be obedient to Christ? Whatever that looks like, whatever He's calling you to do, whatever, uh, whatever you need to change in your belief about Christ, whatever action you need to do, but would you simply be obedient to what Christ is calling you to do? And for some of you, that may be membership. For some of you, you need to come down and pray about that. Maybe there's sin in your life you need to remove. Maybe... Uh, you need to understand what Christ is actually calling you to do. Maybe you don't know Christ at all. And this is an opportunity to know who Christ is. As he plays, um, the altar will be open. People will be down here if you need to pray with them. If you want to pray by yourself, the altar is open. We can all sit here and we can say, yeah, I believe the Bible to be true. Do your actions indicate that? Does your life indicate what you believe about God? Father God, we thank you so much for the examples we find in Scripture of men who just followed you, God who were obedient to what you laid on their heart. God, I pray for this body of believers right now. Lord, I pray that, that you would move in such a mighty way, God, that you would be glorified. Lord, we ask that we would just be obedient to what you're calling us. Lord, we thank you so much in Jesus' name.